tahi and shrimp ceviche. We're talking it's marinated in fresh citrus juices and served with crunchy tortilla strips. It's light, refreshing. It is the perfect starter. Here's what we have. I took some shrimp. This is for the ceviche. And a okay. lot of times people take the shrimp and they just go ahead and, and put Rely this into the, the citrus. Lime juice. Right. And what happens is it will cure it, it will cook it, but not it gets a little mealy when you do it that so way. Is it like so what I boiling? Kind this of is kind of like making shrimp cocktail. So we're gonna bring it up slowly and just let it turn a little opaque take it out of the heat, and then it's ready to go and will absorb all okay. these great flavors. So you're, right. you're great on the cilantro. Thank you want you another know. job? Yes, I do. Give okay. Another job. If you do good. I do. If you do good it. soon, I will set you up with some fantastic Sonoma County wine. Uh, okay? okay. Yeah, let good. me get this. So See? Let me earn it. <laughs> nice bribing. Uh, grab the uh, celery over there. I need about five or six stalks. And here's a peeler. And if you could just take the ribs off of the back of that, that's going to come together for this Excellent. fantastic ceviche marinade. Now, while she does that, okay. I'm just going to cut this about a third of a pound to some one inch pieces. How, how much? Perfect, like you got it, okay. that's it. Break it in half, Let's, I'll even pop the lid off for okay. you. Huh? There you go, just don't ask me to get the lid back on there correctly, I okay. wait forever. Got so it. now I've got some lime juice, some orange juice. I think that's enough celery, this is pretty okay. big stocks, okay? Right. So here's what we've got, throw that in there. And the great thing about the celery is it's gonna add some nice sweetness. So we'll let this kind of puree up. We're looking good. Let me grab a bowl. All you right. want to give me a little chop on that? You, yeah. Are you good with the uh, uh, the big blade? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, now let I'm me gonna... jump over here. I'll, I'll it... swing around. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so this mixture comes off into the bowl. All right. Now we're going to add a little bit of spice to it. We'll add some cumin. Actually, some black pepper. Cumin and going. Okay. Some cumin and going. Is that the little <laughs> no, line just, you just threw me? I did. I, no, just. Okay. That's perfect. You got enough on that. Okay. Right. So look at here. The celery. We've got the juices. I had a little bit of cayenne, a little bit of cumin, some salt and pepper. Let's take a look at the shrimp. The shrimp is just starting to come up to color. Okay. I'm not gonna shock it and put it into an ice bath because then it kind of seizes up. Okay. I'm gonna just drop it in here. Okay. Okay. I get shocked when I get put in ice baths too. Get a little something. Right here, hang on, hang on. Okay, <laughs> this is the worst part of my career today. Let me just get this cilantro out of your hair. <laughs> this, this is great. Hang on a second. <laughs> Let, I like this. <laughs> Let me Did see. You have Don't something, honey? <laughs> I mean, there's cilantro, but I don't oh, want to grab it. Okay. okay, hang on a second. You know what? It's, uh, okay, hang on. It's there we go. I got it. All right. <laughs> Just give me a rerun well, of that tape like, all I'm day. I'm always like, oh, do I have something <laughs> in my teeth? All right, so we take the shrimp out. They're a little bit warm, but they're going to cool down when we pop this in the fridge. All right. Now, this is not the super spicy style. All right. But what you have here is the shrimp have been, we par cooked them a little bit, remember? In the water, the salted uh -huh. water. So what we're trying to do is make it so they're not so mealy. Mm -hmm. Nice and mealy, sweet. Mealy, that's the thing. Normally they get like mealy. Oh my god, mm -hmm. it's so good. Oh my god, I like this one. Try it one more time. This time, I just put a little don't shot. Be shy, don't be shy. There you go. A little sauce, some hot sauce. Okay. Huh? Uh -huh. Gotta love a girl that could mm. eat. <laughs> my Al Pastor tacos. Topped with a fresh pineapple jalapeno salsa. So let's talk about the marinade for the Al Pastor. First, I'm starting off with a little sweet onion. And this is really going to be where, well, if you've ever had Al Pastor, you'll know what this next ingredient's going to be, and that's pineapple. All right, so what I'm doing is taking off the exterior of the pineapple, not doing it how we'd normally do it. We really take that curve to really not waste the pineapple. This, I'm actually going to use these in the uh, cooking process with the Al Pastor. We're going to take this. Use some of this pineapple for the marinade and some of the pineapple for a salsa. Break this up. Now a little chipotle. Now this is called chipotle and adobo. So we'll drop two of those in. There we go. Distilled white vinegar, the old school vinegar. We're gonna hit a little bit of that in there. Some garlic cloves. Now, I'm gonna need a liquid in there that's gonna work with this, gonna give that nice sweetness. Of course, we'd wanna use lime juice, lemon juice. This one right here, a little OJ. So to the fridge for about a half cup of OJ. Now the cast of characters you would definitely expect, a little cumin, 
some Mexican oregano, that really nice, big, fragrant oregano. That's the type we're talking about here. Some smoked paprika. There we go, just a touch of that. And of course, a little kosher salt. That's too much kosher salt. Okay. This marinade, now here's the thing I warn you. You know that you want to marinate it and you want to go long and you want to really let the flavors build. I don't think more than four hours for this one, okay? There we go. So the bone in cross cut shoulder, drop that in. Drop it, well, all that marinade. And this can go for, you can take this to the fridge or you can just let it go on the countertop. We're looking for about two, maybe three hours. Okay, kind of move it around here a little bit. All right, seal this up and we are good to go. Now let's talk about the salsa. Now, get some um, onion. So the salsa is gonna be pretty straightforward. We're gonna let the jalapeno work with the sweetness of the, uh, of the pineapple. Really nice fine dice, just so it kind of just melts into it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sear off this pork, uh, this pork shoulder. A little bit of oil. This should be pretty screaming hot. I'm gonna reserve the marinade and throw it in there in just a second because I'm gonna braise this off in the wood-fired oven. Wood-fired oven, your oven, convection oven, whatever it might be. So we're gonna drop this in, should make some noise. Just what I was looking for, back to the salsa. Okay, so all this is in. Now, what's his need? Absolutely some jalapeno. Roll it around a few times. And again, a really nice, fine dice. Get a little Fresno chili into this. Again, that same idea. There we go. So you got the spice, tropical flavor coming through from that pineapple. Just give this a little bit more dice, and we really would like to let this have some time to come together. It'll help the, the uh, jalapeno uh, mellow out a little bit. This is really the crowd pleaser on top of this taco. Okay, we'll drop that in. Let me take a look at this. There we go, nice little sear. We're gonna get a good amount of liquid in there, but let me sear off that side first. Back to the cilantro, that might be a little much. Now I'll roll that cilantro, kind of like when you're working with basil and you're trying to get that chiffonade. And of course, what it needs is a little salt and a little lime juice. And that goes in. Touch. Now, anytime I'm gonna throw lime juice in, of course, I'm gonna throw a little lime zest because that gives that real great citrus flavor without all the acid. So we'll just give a little zest. Remember, once you've cut that lime, it's real hard to zest it. So I'll just roll that a few times. And press. You would be amazed. Now listen, I'll tell you about this because I think you've seen it. You might not have a lime press. Here's what happens. Citrus is super expensive different times of the year. So if you're gonna do it, get everything out of it. This should almost turn it inside out. But I still watch people all the time just sitting there wringing it with their hands. Maybe they'll get a fork in there and kind of give it a little bit of work. You cannot beat in any way, shape, or form a citrus press. So look at this. Everything out of there. See how it turns almost inside out? Awesome for the compost. Okay. Give that a little stir. And we'll let those jalapenos just start to work and break down inside of all that uh, onion and pineapple. All right, look at this. Seared off nice, good crust on both sides. Told you to hold on to the marinade, exactly. We're gonna take this leftover marinade, pour it in on top, okay? Don't worry, that's not all the liquid. You need to come up about halfway on this for the liquid to really get that braising, to get that to, to work in there so it's gonna be shredding apart. So we get a little chicken stock. Low sodium, because we've already got enough of our own seasonings that we put in there. So we'll hit some of the chicken stock in about halfway up. This is gonna become the lid for this al pastor. So what happens, I'm gonna throw them right on top. So we're gonna get the flavor and we're gonna get all those enzymes working to break this down to make it super tender, like that. Grab a towel, into the oven 350 degrees, two, maybe three hours. We'll be able to check it, just seeing how fork tender it is. But how cool is that? Using the pineapple as a lid? Listen, Al Pastor, the guy Fieri way, hanging out at the ranch, but just take a look at what we're dealing with right there. 
You have the skins of the pineapple sitting on top of that beautiful pork shoulder that had a chance to marinate, braised it off a little chicken stock and the marinade itself. We'll let this cool down for a second. This is what we've been waiting for. I'm telling you what, you are gonna flip when you try this. So I'm just giving this a quick little chop and I'm just gonna drop this right back in. So look at that. Oh, now I've got some great condiments over here. One being this pineapple salsa that I made. Mm. That pineapple with the vinegar, with the adobo, you know, the uh, chipotle. Mm. So how about you throw me about, uh, oh, I don't know, a cup of vinegar in there, a cup of apple cider vinegar. Here we go. Uh. Get some water in here, how'd it do? Sometimes I just have to take the lid right off that thing. <laughs> That's one. That should be about three quarters of that bottle, Terry. Okay. Let's Got go ahead, done. throw that in. I'll get a little bit of garlic. We'll do a rough chop on this. So it's apple cider vinegar, water, some salt, some pepper, and that's gonna take care of it. Matter of fact, you wanna grab the ribs, there's some baby gotcha. backs in there. Now, when you go to your butcher, you can ask him to take that silver skin off the back of those baby back ribs, and that's one so that you can kinda, you know, get in, you know, get that flavor of the marinade in there. And also, it, when the ribs cook, they don't get, they don't uh, tighten up. That silver skin doesn't tighten up and make them kinda curl up on the barbecue. We've all seen that, right? Okay. Let me get right over here from you. You bet. A little compost. You do compost in there at your joint? I don't at the joint, but I do it uh, in my brother's garden. Okay, so what we do, kind of wrap them up, make sure that everybody's submerged down in the liquid. Where's your okay. compost pile? Huh? Compost right in there. Alrighty. Okay. Now, you want to go ahead and grab that ginger and knock off about a tablespoon of ginger, but I want you to take the skins off it. You got it. Okay, there we go. Now, these are wrapped up. Actually, no, I'll just leave these out here. These are only going to be about 15 minutes. So you take the back off of that. I'll hit a little bit of this garlic. Now I've got the serrano and the onion down first. Why? I want to kind of sweat them a little bit. If I throw this garlic in too early, well, it has an opportunity to burn, and we know when garlic burns, it doesn't taste right. The garlic goes in. I'm great. Throw it right in. Nice. Okay. There we go. Deglaze this with a little bit of cider vinegar. You always gotta have vinegar. This has got some of the main ingredients that you have in a regular barbecue sauce and the little guyified with uh, things like raspberry jam. So we'll put a little bit of that down. Get a couple cups of these uh, raspberries in. Hey Terry, you wanna grab the corn out? Let's go ahead and start getting this on. Sure thing. We'll get some raspberries down. A couple tablespoons of molasses, cause that's again a barbecue sauce. A Little bit of chipotle peppers in some adobo sauce. So the smoked jalapeno pepper in some of the spicy vinegar tomato sauce that goes with it. So now I'm gonna take these ribs, shake them off a little bit. I'm gonna put a little char on them indoors, okay? Then what's gonna happen, put them in this pan with a little beer and some onion and some garlic, tent it and throw it in the oven and let it go kinda, well I won't call it low and slow, but I'll let it kinda go for a while. And check that out. Now I grilled them on top here and now I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of this uh, I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of this barbecue sauce, but let me find a spoon. So we got some raspberry preserves, we got some vinegar, and then we've got some, some frozen raspberries. So we've got all those great flavors of raspberry, and then the chipotle pepper that has got a little of the adobo to it. Look at that, there's some molasses, all the key components that you need to, to good barbecue sauce. Okay, 300 degrees, about an hour and a half. There we go. A serving of some ribs. Now check this out. These are a brined rib that we did with some vinegar and then hit them with, uh, a, a, you're gonna love the barbecue sauce, a little chipotle pepper and some raspberry preserves. Southwest lobster rolls. We're talking grilled tail meat and creamy cilantro lime slaw packed into garlicky toasted buns. A new take on an old Northeast classic. Drop uh, half the butter in each of these. We're gonna make a compound. We're actually gonna make a garlic butter to go with the rolls for these lobster rolls. And we're also gonna make a basting butter that we're gonna put on there with a little habanero. I've got some garlic here. Nice. Give me a little zest of that lime. We'll get some capers in here as well. Go there, go there. Thank you. We're gonna hit some of the lime juice into it. Watch out, coming over, dropping some shallots in. I want to drop this parsley over to you here, and that's going to be for that butter. Turn that heat down a little bit. I'm going to drop this habanero. It's an essence. I just let it steep in the butter and in the white wine, and that really just let it come out a little bit. You knew it was there, but it didn't burn you. So you see how this is all coming together? Yes, so we've got the 
we got the garlic, we got the shallots, we got the habanero, we got the capers. Uh, we got to turn that one down because it's going to start to burn. That's going to go together. We're going to grill some lobster tails. In this lobster tail, I want you to go right here at the center. Yep. Push through. Yep. Down. Now, the younger the lobster, or actually, if it's molted, Softer. if it's lost, it's going to have a little thinner shell. Sometimes you'll get into them and you'll be pushing down on me like, there's no way I'm getting through it. Right. So go ahead and crack them all the way through, cut them in half. Okay. While he does that, I got a little garlic through, cut him cut him in, completely. Yeah, back to where I was, right in the and board, right, right there. there. Boom, okay, and now, down. as he does that, I am actually going to leave. No, I'm sorry. See you later. Okay. Okay. Let's go ahead. Okay. Don't worry. No, you got to go all the way through. Okay, okay. you good? Good. Tell him to put right. him in half. Now, now here's what I want to do. We you want throw to... them on here. Cut them. And grab yourself a spoon and drizzle a little bit of the habanero butter on it. I'll switch sides with you. Because gotcha. I'm going to pull the yuca out. There you go, big spoon, drizzle some of the habanero butter right on top. The texture and the sweet aspect of lobster is really what makes it so great. So now you can take it spicy and you can take it Asian, it can be Italian, it can be, it can be subtle, it can be cold, it can be hot, you know, it goes anywhere. So these go down right here, Joey. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start them in the shell, get a little, get a little sear on them, flip them over, mark them off, continue to baste them. And the last thing we gotta work on before we put this all together, yep. let's talk about rolls. So take a look at this, brother. And here's what we'll do. We'll start them right Lobster here. Lobster roll. Here's, I'm going to let you work on this. Okay. So we take knife. We're going to do it just like they do in New right England. Right the center. Yep. Going to cut it right down the center like this. Gotcha. Okay. Spin them open. Open right it here. just a little bit. Hit in just a touch of that garlic butter right on yeah. like that. And That'd throw it on the grill. It's like magic. You see the magic? All right. So what do we have for you? Some fantastic lobster that's been grilled, basted with a little bit of a uh, habanero butter. Then we've got some toasted rolls over here with a little garlic butter onto those. This beautiful lobster cooked in the shell over hardwood. And this is gonna be, this is really not gonna look right, but here, I'm gonna let you try this right here. This, oh, good, thank you, I thought you were gonna make me feed you. Huh? Okay, you got that, bring it over here. Let's do this. Tag team, throw a little avocado right on there. Just two pieces. So we hit a little garlic butter on top of this. Right. Excellent. Now we're going to go, Joey, there's some more of that. Now we'll throw some of the lobster meat in there. And throw that little juice in there. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. OK. Throw a little bit of that on top. See, I, what I like about this is it, it, you bring your own flavor to it, no pun intended, but it's got the heat. And that's what I mm. like. I like I do. And a lot lobster of stuff rolls can get a little bit yeah. boring. So when you put the heat on it, it's oh, absolutely. Hit me with a little bit more. We'll more get some wood. tomato, uh, some avocado right here. You got it. Okay. We'll this one. Okay. You know, when you get a little bit of that bite, you taste that habanero, but it's not too overpowering. Oh, love it. Okay, let me throw one on there for you. I got a cold beer right here. This is a lobster, lobster roll right here. Lobster. Right? There you go. One, two, three. All right. Hmm? That right there is a kick beep lobster roll. Did you just you just edited your own comment? I did. So here's the deal. This Hanging out good. in the backyard, cooking with your friends, especially your famous friend from NSYNC, Joey Patone, my brother. You killed it on Rachel oh, vs. Guy's Celebrity. You. you rocked the kitchen tonight. Next time you come back, you set the menu, and we'll go from there. Okay. Through the course of the last few weeks, I have showed you some of my favorite recipes. I mean, some of the favorites, some of the ones that we love to do at the Fieti house or up here at the ranch, but I pulled out all the stops. And I'm gonna show you one of the OG, old school, number one recipes that we do at Guy's Burger Joint. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Today, you get to learn about my signature cheeseburger. You ready? Now, it's just because we're hanging and we're cool that I'm gonna teach you this. You should do me a favor. Don't go telling everybody about it. Just keep it on the DL. First thing we're gonna start off with is, wait for it, donkey sauce. Yes, the infamous donkey sauce. You wanna know how it came about? I was getting ready to make these burgers for some friends of ours. We were putting this burger concept together and they said, why, why do you call it donkey sauce? And I said, because if you don't try it, well, you're just a jackass. But um, bum thank you very much. That's for donkey sauce, that's the real name. I'm not kidding you. So here's how we're gonna start it off. First, just a little bit of mayonnaise. Some roasted garlic. Yellow mustard. I know. You're seeing it all. A little Worcestershire sauce. 
Cut you some salt. Crack black pepper. So everything you love about mayonnaise, the fat, the creaminess, the saltiness, all we did was amp it up and take the flavor another level. That's donkey sauce. All right, donkey sauce is done. What do we need next? The SMC, the super melted cheese. You got to promise you're not going to show anybody this. Now, in this pot, I have a little bit of water already going. Now I'm going to add some half and half. This, we got to go low and slow. I have some processed cheese, all cubed up. And we're going to bring this temperature up nice and easy so it doesn't break. We'll go in with a little bit of Worcestershire and just a little kiss of some Tabasco. It's not going to be hot, but you get the idea. We need to just have a little bit of heat in there, OK? So we're going to let this go low and slow. And as that processed cheese starts to melt a little bit, we're going to add in some of my other favorite cheeses. You could go with a double boiler with this. I don't think it's necessary. If you just don't crank the heat, you won't burn it. You won't scorch it. Just take your time. Processed cheese starting to melt a little bit. Now we're going to back it up with some real cheese. We're going to get in some smoked Gouda. And again, we uh, shred it really thin and give it a chance to melt nicely. We'll get in with some cheddar. Shredded really finely. Whisk would also be a nice thing to do, but as always, I just have one utensil. If I could make this into a knife and a fork and a pair of tongs all at the same time, like a gigantic Swiss Army knife, I tell you, I'd be going places. A little provolone. There we go. Now it's really starting to work for us. Beautiful. Now, one of the real keys to this cheese sauce is to hand shred it so you don't get that funky little dust that they put on the outside of the cheese to keep it from coagulating when it's inside the bag. I mean, I'll tell you one thing about buying cheese. Buy that whole block and shred it yourself. We'll just keep the cheese sauce warm. That's ready to go. Beautiful. OK, uh, next up, the burger. Now, what we have here is 80-20 ground beef. And when we're talking about making great burgers, if I'm getting everybody over and we're going to do it, I would recommend going to the butcher and saying, grind me up a little bit of brisket, give me some short rib, and give me some chuck. If you're going to do it, do it right. We've got about a pound and a half here, so this should make us about four six-ounce patties. My favorite way to do it, just to make sure that we're keeping everybody even, because you know with two boys, if you don't make the patties even, someone's going to be upset that someone got a bigger one. OK, so we take the patty. We're going to ball it up. Don't press it super hard. Now, I want you to just take, I want you to do this at home. I want you to just hit that salt all the way around. Roll that salt all the way around with your favorite kosher salt, and it's seasoned. No pepper, nothing else, just like this. I have my flat top over here, but since I know that you might not have one at home, I want to show you how to do this with a cast iron. If you don't have cast iron, I want you to go get one. Sporty goods stores have them galore. Go to Camp Chef, anybody's got them. But really good cast iron is the way to go, and we're going to drop this down. There we go, that's what we're looking for, OK? Cold meat hot pan. While that's going, wash my hands real quick. Smash the patty. Seasoned all the way around. One over the top. Sometimes you'll see people do it with a big hand press. That's what I'm looking for. And you only get to smash it once, folks. Brioche bun. Get a little bit of this garlic butter on there. As Soon as we see some of the juice float to the top, we're going to flip it and try to put it in another spot where it wasn't just exactly at. And that's what we're looking for, that nice crust, that Maillard effect on top. Smoky smells burgers. We're going to treat both sides of the bun. Now, got to get this working real quick. We take some of the cheese sauce. This is a little hot, so it's going to run a bit on us, but you'll get the general idea. When it cools down, it's a little bit easier to apply to it. We we'll take the cheese sauce, throw it right up on top. Throw the cheese on top. Dome, 
and some uh, and some water. This steam is going to help melt that cheese better than any salamander putting it under the broiler. So like this. This is just the exact way we do it in the restaurant. Guys' kitchen and bar, guys' burger joint, you go on Carnival Cruise Lines, you watch what they're doing. This is exactly how it goes down. Okay? A little bit of the donkey sauce. Liberally, we call it coast to coast. Want to get that fat all the way across. Hit a few pickles right on the bottom. Pickles are key, got to have that acid, got to have that tang. Really thin onions. That's what I'm talking about. That's melted cheese right on top of it. Thin sliced iceberg lettuce, a couple thin sliced tomatoes, nice toasted brioche bun. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the burger. That cheeseburger right there, we won New York City Food and Wine Festival, Burger Bash. We've sold hundreds of thousands of these. But I want you to take a look at it. Juicy, scratch made, handmade. My mouth is watering so bad. Are you ready? I gotta be honest with you. It's a simple burger. It's a simple recipe. You just gotta use great ingredients and you gotta follow the rules. You're gonna serve it just like we do at the restaurant. I'm giving you all I got, folks. Hope you dig it. Go home and make it. I know you're gonna love it. See you next week.